Welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am your host, Tom Downey. Here's what's coming up on today's loaded Cowboys Report. The practice squad is finished thanks to an offensive line signing. Not the one we were expecting. The reports of the Cowboys having interest in a Denzel Mim trade, potentially reuniting with Malik Turner, who I know at least some of you would like. If the Dak Prescott deal, the next one, got more cost in light of the Russell Wilson extension and a Kelvin Joseph injury update. All that's coming up. Make sure you watch to the end. We begin, though, with the signing. The practice squad for the Cowboys, the 17-man unit, is now finished. Dakota Shepley, if you're going, who? I get it. Uh, he has been added to the practice squad, filling the last open spot, at least for now. As we know, teams will always shuffle and rotate that practice squad throughout the regular season. He can play left guard, center, and right guard. He is an interior offensive lineman. He's also only played special teams in the regular season. He's bounced around the NFL, began his career 2018 with the Jets. Played some in the CFL for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. He's actually from Canada originally. We know how the, the Cowboys like those, those guys, Tyrone Crawford, etc. cetera. Uh, the 49ers in 2020, and then Seattle last year and this preseason. In total, he's had less than 200 snaps uh, across the board in terms of the preseason production, zero sacks, zero hits, just the two hurries. His PFF run grade is actually 77.3. Decent production in the preseason but it's also the preseason. So with the addition of Dakota Shepley, the Cowboys practice squad, as we broke down on one of yesterday's videos, is now complete. If you are not already subscribed, you need to be. We broke down the practice squad in its entirety, all the players, plus some Michael Gallup injury news. If you haven't already watched it, Go check it out. I'll put it in the comment section in the description as well. But make sure you're subscribed. That way you don't miss out on any Cowboys news or Cowboys rumors as things happen pretty much year-round, even if it isn't really a true 365 talent acquisition business like Stephen Jones might claim that it is. The other video from yesterday was Jason Peters. I'd floated the idea of, hey, maybe you sign him to your practice squad, which could still happen. Now, you could just cut somebody. Maybe you move Sean McEwen to some injured status. I believe that's an option for the practice squad. Or you wait till after week one to sign him. He is coming in for a visit today. We'll see if he gets added or not. I don't think the addition of Shepley eliminates Peters as an option. It just makes it requiring another move if you do add Jason Peters. So keep an eye on him. We certainly will right here at the Cowboys Report. So make sure you guys are subscribed. Let's go to the Denzel Mims trade, or at least the potential trade. A report out of New York originally stated that the Cowboys called the Jets, from uh, Connor Hughes, by the way, who works for SNY, I believe, called the, the Jets about a Denzel Mims trade. Talks went nowhere because the Jets wanted a fourth-round pick. I will make note that Mike Fisher says it was a conditional, fifth a conditional fourth, that unless he hits 500 yards, becomes a fifth. So fourth, fifth. We'll see there. Mims has requested a trade from the Jets. The four teams linked to Mims were the Cowboys, the Seahawks, the Vikings, and Panthers. And I find those four teams interesting because you got to remember who leaked it. Clearly it was a leak from the New York Jets organization. It came out of New York, right? Well, the Vikings and Panthers traded for a receiver. Seattle has, has a good working relationship with the Jets via trade. The Cowboys don't, though, but they need receiver help. So I wonder if the leak originated as a, let's try to drive up more trade interest in Denzel Mims. Who knows? Now, assuming it's a fourth slash fifth, it ends up being about the same there, would you have traded Denzel Mims for a fourth round pick, or a fourth round pick for Denzel Mims? Type T for trade, P for pass. This will be the pinned comment on today's video. If you get the ad break on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down to that pinned comment and let me know. Relative to the talent, a fourth slash fifth sounds pretty appetizing uh, for Denzel Mims. Here's the problem. There's nothing he's done in his NFL career that shows he's worth that level of draft capital for a player that'd be receiver four in a month or two on this Cowboys roster, which is the same as he's in with New York right now. 490 career yards, and as good as he looked in the final preseason game of week three, I mean... That almost matched his production last year in 2021. I like Denzel Mims a lot. I liked him a lot coming out of Baylor. Can I get him for a sixth? Okay, let's have that conversation. I am unsurprised that nobody offered a fourth slash fifth round pick for him. 
because he hasn't been good in two years. And knowing what Jalen Rager went for somehow I thought was a lot, but Rager, remember, also has outplayed Denzel Mims in his NFL career. So it's got to be less than that as far as I'm concerned. Plus, there's this argument from the Cowboys' perspective. By week four, it's going to be Lamb, Gallup, and Tolbert. So now you're penciling in Mims as wide receiver four. Unless you think Tolbert is not going to make a big impact for you in year one, you've got Fehoko, Brown. You could easily cut Dennis Houston. That's not a big problem at all. Uh, just put it on the practice squad. I think you'll be able to get him there. Kevontae Turpin will be your return man. Purely from a talent perspective, he, is, he would be one of your top five or six receivers on this roster. It's a question of you've got issues right now at wide receiver two, wide receiver three with the health of Gallup for now, and Tolbert you know, being a rookie he's going to need some time. I think that's often overlooked. Denzel Mims kind of still more of a lottery ticket. Does he really elevate your floor in the same way you would like him to? I don't know if it does. I'm glad they called, but a fourth rounder is not – it's not something I'd be down to give up as far as I'm concerned. Now, today's show is made possible by our sportsbook partner, BetUS. Head over to chatsports.com slash bet and use that promo code you see on screen, Cowboys125. It'll get you a 125% deposit bonus when you put down at least $100. The Cowboys are just a one-point underdog against the Bucks in Week 1. I'm kind of surprised the line's that small, even for a home game. Maybe Vegas feels better about the Cowboys than I know many of us do with the way things ended last year. They are, of course, the favorites in the NFC East still narrowly and a good favorite to make the NFC playoffs, which isn't a huge surprise. Tons of prop bets as well over on BetUS. Go check them out, chatsports.com slash bet, promo code Cowboys125. More receiver talk here. How about bringing back Malik Turner? Many of you have pitched this idea and... I do know how things tend to go around this time of the year. Player you've heard of get cut, and it's Cowboys, Cowboys? Probably not. Uh, Turner did not make the, the 49ers roster. He did, however, re-sign their practice squad. Now, I get why he's been linked. He did flash a little bit last year for the Cowboys, but the Niners had Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, Juwan Jennings, Danny Gray, and Ray Ray McLeod beat him out for the five spots there. Turner... Did flash for the Cowboys last year. And if he's your wide receiver five, I love it. Um, the Cowboys clearly believe in Noah Brown right, more, right now a lot more than Malik Turner. And I'm fine with that. It's the same conversation to a lesser extent as, as Denzel Mims. If I needed a wide receiver five, I'd be all over Malik Turner. I don't need a receiver five. I, the, the, the back end depth is fine. It's a question of do you have enough reliable starting high end impact. Malik Turner is not a high-end impact player. Yes, he was effective in a small role when given chances last year, but he didn't make the Niners roster. Any player you sign off of waivers is not going to magically fix and be like, oh, he's our new receiver two, new receiver three. These guys don't exist. Like, that's not how NFL rosters work. With that in mind, name a player you want to sign. Jason Peters, a longtime vet. He could be your swing tackle. I'm all for Jason Peters. I'm fine with Turner, but doesn't fix my issues as far as I'm concerned. The, the issues for the Cowboys is not just back-end depth. It's higher-end talent, impact players. Good luck finding impact players in September, barring a trade. But via free agency, name someone you want to sign. Let's talk about the NFL news of the day. Russell Wilson just got the bag from the Denver Broncos. A five-year, $245 million deal with $165 million guaranteed. And once again, the quarterback... Uh, Market right to the moon, just like Dogecoin, but actually better than Dogecoin. Russell Wilson, now the second highest paid QB on a per year basis, jumping Kyler Murray by a good number and just behind Aaron Rodgers, and now second in guaranteed money behind the outlier fully guaranteed Deshaun Watson deal, thanks Cleveland, and ahead once again of Kyler Murray. The market will only go up. Russell Wilson now $49 million per year on a five-year deal, which Typically, it's $2 million per year more uh, each year you add from a balancing contract perspective. Dak Prescott, then, is due for a new deal. Probably not this year, but could do it next year once the year wraps up. What is the most you would pay Dak Prescott per year? Drop that number figure for me in the comment section. Let me be clear. You're going to have to pay him $50 million per year unless he takes a very team-friendly contract. Dak's next deal is going to be massive because the salary cap's going up, 
quarterback contracts alongside with it, and from being a consistent competitor, you can't do it without a top 10 quarterback. The Cowboys have one right now. Here's my question, and I don't know if they learned their lesson. Did the Cowboys realize the air in their ways the last time Dak Prescott was due for a big deal? They could have gotten him a little bit below market value had they timed that contract correctly. Instead, they were the last of the of the wave to pay their franchise guy. As we told you, it took him less than a year for him to no longer be a top five QB. Now he's barely top 10. If you are proactive in paying your quarterback, like the Denver Broncos just were after trading for Russell Wilson, like the Bills were in paying Josh Allen, you can keep that number lower, keep the cap hit lower, and make it easier to win football games. And once he's old, take a 20-whatever million dollar cap charge as you rebuild for a year. Not only that, there are other quarterbacks due for a deal. Not right now necessarily, but after next, after this upcoming season. Lamar Jackson's due for a deal. He's going to get paid more than Russell Wilson. Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow, both those guys are going to get more than Russell Wilson unless they take a team-friendly contract. Herbert and Burrow, eligible after this year. If I'm the Cowboys, I want to get that deal done before Lamar, before Herbert, before Burrow. Because if you do, let's say hypothetically you make Dak the, give him $50 million a year, second highest paid QB behind Aaron Rodgers. By the time Lamar, Herbert, and Burrow all get paid, Dak's barely going to be top five. And then it will look a little bit more team friendly. So there are two options for Dallas. As long as you believe in Dak Prescott's your quarterback. Pay him and just accept the fact that it's expensive, but it'll actually save you money in the long run because you're not waiting and waiting and then letting the market set you. Or be patient and not pay the guy and have the exact same problem the Cowboys ran into the last time a deal was done. I know it's expensive. I know it is. It will save you money in the long run if you pay your quarterback earlier than later. Who cares about the guaranteed money? You, you got it in the bank to pay him, and... It's going to be expensive no matter what. So I hope the Cowboys learn their lesson. Don't wait on paying Dak, but we'll see. One last note, injuries on Kelvin Joseph. He appears to be working his way through the concussion protocol. He's got one more stage, I believe, to clear. So good news there on Kelvin Joseph. Uh, should be good to go in time for week one. Cowboys carrying six corners plus special teamer C.J. Goodwin. Trayvon Diggs, Anthony Brown, Jordan Lewis, Joseph Wright, and Deron Bland. Might see some Izzy Mukwamu get some reps also uh, at the cornerback spot. But that's where things sit for Dallas. So good news on Kelvin Joseph. Like we mentioned on yesterday's video, Tyler Smith also back at practice. Now before we go, it's time once again to bully the Cowboys into fewer flags. Because bullying can work, and this is a good thing to bully somebody about. Type flags in the comments section to help the penalty boys stop committing so many mistakes.